Hello again. In this video we're going to cover a complete setup of a mount. Uh, in this case it's going to be the NEQ6 and we're going to cover sort of a little bit of old ground, maybe just refine it a little bit as well. Uh, but there's quite a few things that you can do inside your house when you're waiting for the cloud to clear. Um, just to make the whole experience when you do get outside a little bit easier. And um, we're going to go through all that step by step and hopefully it'll just help you to understand your mount a little bit better and get the best out of it. Uh, so we're going to start off with a tripod and what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to take a closer look at it. Right, we're at the business end of our tripod now and we're going to need a couple of tools for the next stages. Um, those being a boat level like this and a steel rule, either a 6 inch or a 12 inch, doesn't matter which, and a fine permanent marker like this one. Um, at a pinch you could use Tipex and I'll show you a little trick with Tipex just to sort of a little bit later on. Um, so it's quite simple really, um, you know, the, the equipment that you need. And the first thing that we're going to want to do at this stage is we want to level this, this tripod. Now, all you need to remember is that it's on three axes because it's a tripod. So you're going to want to level across this axis and that one and that one and trust me it's not as easy as you think it's like sawing one leg off a table you know and then it's got a wobble somewhere else but just work your way around methodically um, you know until you get it nice and level across the three axes now there are quite a few opinions on whether leveling's actually important or not um, it's like the old saying about opinions um, this is just mine uh, but I'll explain why I'm actually leveling this to the amount of precision that I have done um, with this when we get the head on and that's what we're going to do next we're going to put the head on uh, when you do come to fit your head it's a good idea to um, to unscrew your, your uh, azimuth bolts which are the ones they will actually press on each side of this small pillar here and you know you, if you've got quite a heavy mount like the NEQ6 if you've got both the bolts screwed in you start to try and fit it on and it won't fit you've, you've not undone the bolts enough so just undo your bolts nice and wide when you come to set your mount onto, onto your tripod and that's what I'm going to do next and we'll be back in a moment right we've now got the the head on the tripod and as we know that the tripod is is absolutely level you can at this point check the inbuilt bubble on your head and just see how, how close to, to being accurate it is sometimes you can get lucky uh, like I have and it's, it's pretty it's pretty close in uh, so other times you can find that it's been fitted a little bit badly and it's it's absolutely way off now you can go sort of two ways with this you can either sort of well three ways really you can either sort of try and prize this out and re-glue it in you know but level it up um, or you can in fact you can get your, your little permanent marker and just put a mark where your bubble actually is you know when you level uh, or another option is if you look on eBay you can find these these bubbles just slightly bigger uh, for about 99 pence and you know if you can manage to find somewhere to fit one of those on your mount somewhere then you know you're away. Uh, you might notice that my uh, azimuth and altitude bolts are a little bit different than yours it's just that I fitted upgrades to mine. Um, so next what we're going to do is move on to the settings on the head which you know like I say I'll show you then why it is that we've gone to so much trouble setting the tripod up so we're just going to move angle and we'll show you the next part. Right, at this stage what we're going to do is we're going to loosen off the RA clutch and turn your mount through 90 degrees. And what you want to do is get your boat level and put the level on your weight bar. Now you need to take your time with this one uh, because it's something that you really only need to do once if you, if you follow what I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, so take your time over it and once you've got it absolutely level just double check it once you've locked it that you've locked your clutch up make sure that you you know you're, you're absolutely dead level there and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to the the ra clock and change that about so we're going to go back into close-up mode again right we're now going to make some adjustments with the the ra clock and as we've discussed in other videos it is an actual clock this it, it starts at zero goes all the way around to 23, 0 being 12 o'clock and it does the full 24 hours in a circuit. Now just to make sure that you're using the right scale on this, if you're in the northern hemisphere and you just put it over to 0, if you're in the northern hemisphere it should be counting 
from, from left to right, so one, two, three. The other one, the lower scale, is for Southern Hemisphere. Um, so just make sure that you're using the right one. And as I've stated before, there's there's some instructions that say use the top scale, some that use the bottom scale. But there's actually two different variations of the of this this clock disc, if you like, that Skywatcher have brought out, and you could end up with either one of them. So don't just take it for granted that you've got you know you, that you're using the top scale or using the bottom. Just check it for yourself. And like I said, it's really easy. Um, it's the one that's going round clockwise uh, for the Northern Hemisphere. Right, so what we're going to do next is we want to move this clock to 6 o'clock, well, 1800 hours. Um, get it absolutely spot on and just lock that ring up. And these, the locking screws on these can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you've got fingers like cucumbers. Um, but just lock it there at the, the 1800 um, while this, everything's still at the horizontal. And then what we're going to do is loosen off the RA clutch, spin round until we hit 12 o'clock, like so. Get it exactly on that 12 o'clock. And then lock your clutch. Now, if you go to 1800, it'll be 12 o'clock. If you go to six o'clock, it'll be it'll be on zero. It, you know, it doesn't matter which one really. Um, it's just that you know, it's, there's 24 hours, and you you sort of six hours if you like um, to zero or to 12 o'clock. Um, so we're just using it as a measuring device to measure 90 degrees in effect. So we've got that on 12. Now, here's a little tip for you. What you want to do at this point is take your steel rule and your fine line marker. Place your steel rule on that line and following up the line that's on your clock as well and just scribe a fine line on the opposite side of your mount like so or, or well if your pen works the first time now if you get it wrong um, obviously just use a, a little bit of solvent and give it a clean off and have another go at it but that mark now no matter where your clock is once you know once your clock's been unlocked you know that you can move your mount about all over the place your clock can be moved about but you know that if you get those lines lined up like so you're in the home position because we're actually going to use these this clock for a, another purpose which means that you know it's you can't leave it where we've just locked it out to you know to use it so it's not like zero is going to be 12 o'clock all the time um you know homing on your mount rather is going to be 12 o'clock all the time so like i said that little mark will just help a great deal and we'll we'll put another little mark shortly which you know we'll move on to so we'll just go on to the next stage now okay next we're going to level up the declination axis and this is a really easy one all we need to do is to loosen the clutch and turn the puck with the bolt level in it until that is exactly level like so again lock it off and now go to your, your declination clock which is at the back here now I'm not going to alter mine because it's, it's already set and I don't really want to start messing about and having to reset it again but this is set to 90 because uh, this one's marked out in degrees so set it to 90 once you've done that and, and locked it back up again at 90 if you then loosen your clutch and turn until it reads zero you will then be exactly in your in your home position with regards to declination in this aspect so that eventually using so the both sets of lining up that we've done uh, you'll be able to find your home position really easy which is using your mark that we penciled in and using the the zero on the clock on this one um, you know you, you'll be at the proper home position which is scope up weights down and we'll move on to the next part right this next section is either going to become really easy uh, and you'll get lucky or it's going to cause you a lot of heartache because it, it's just one of them things that there's no in between it just you know it's either really easy or really hard and if you look on close inspection on your polar scope itself 
you'll see three grub screws with Allen key sockets in them, um, positioned at thirds around the, the perimeter of this polar scope. And what they are is that to adjust the reticule in your polar scope uh, and sent to be able to centralize it. Now sometimes you can be really lucky and actually find that it's bang on dead center as it is straight from the factory. Uh, if not, like I said, it either falls in or uh, you're gonna get a lot of our tape with it. And that's the part that we're gonna cover next. Okay, our polar scope has to be centered exactly on this axis, which is what we're gonna do next using the rub screws. Um, and we'll talk you through that part. So, as we rotate through the RA axis, we're also rotating the polar scope, which in turn means that the reticule is also rotating. If that reticule isn't centered, then it's gonna be moving on and off target with rotation, meaning that we're not going to be aligned as well as we could be. So we're gonna fix that next. Okay, what we've got here is a graphical representation of this part being your reticule and the three grub screws here. Now, what you want to be doing is set up your mount near a window or if it, you know, you can do this at night time as well and use a star if you like. Um, but what you do is use the controls on your mount uh, using your azimuth and your altitude bolts and pick an object that you can centre in the cross like so. Uh, obviously for this, like I said, we're using a graphical representation. Next, once you've got that object centered in your cross, what you want to do is rotate your mount in RA whilst looking through your polar scope. Now, if that star or that object stays dead center in that cross, then you're fine. You, you know you've got nothing to worry about. It means that your reticule is centered. If you find that the object drifts off, like so, it means you're going to have to make some adjustments and what you need to do is you need to adjust your grub screws to just move that reticule over. Now there's an easy way to do it and that is if you get the position that it's moved to, you want to actually move your reticule in the direction that it's moved by half as much as, it, as it's actually moved. So in other words, we would adjust the grub screws and just move the actual reticule to approximately there and then recenter it using your, al your altitude and your azimuth bolts again recenter it back into the cross rotate the mount again and you have to keep repeating that until eventually this point stays right in the center of that cross when you do a rotation on in right ascension and sometimes you can just have one go at it and it's spot on. Sometimes you can be there for a good hour. It really is an absolute pain and probably the, the most difficult and awkward thing that you can end up doing with your mount. But once it's done, it's done and you never have to touch it again. So that's your, your polar scope alignment uh, reticule sorted out. And we'll move on to the next stage. Right, we're now on uh, the final section of what I would call the home preparation of your mount. Um, and in this section what we're going to do is we're going to align your reticule along with your right ascension and your right ascension clock with Polaris Transit. And um, what that means is that when you do go outside and you're setting up to actually do a polar alignment it will make things really easy. And you know when we do that in another video you'll see exactly why. So what we're going to do first of all, and with this I would recommend that you actually go outside and find a bright star somewhere. Just go out with your mount and find yourself a bright star. And what you want to do is you want to centre that bright star in the cross in your polar scope, like so, um, using your altitude and your azimuth bolts. And get that star right in the centre of your cross like this uh, that we've got now. Again, this is a, a graphical representation. Uh, once you've done that, you want to try not to nudge your mount or move it about uh, because this part you want it to be as accurate as possible. And what you want to do is using just your altitude bolts is to adjust your mount and move it so that, that star goes vertically down and lines up like so on this circle in your reticule. Now we know because we've only used the altitude bolts that that's, that star has moved exactly vertically from here 
to here which is why we don't want to nudge them out or get any movement from side to side because getting this little part precise makes a lot of difference once we've done that we need to go over to the right ascension and make a little adjustment there and that's what we're going to do next so now what we need to do is rotate right ascension and look through the polar scope at the same time the object being to rotate that reticule and get that star right in the middle of that circle that represents Polaris. What you've done now is you've moved that Polaris part of the reticule to being right at the bottom because of everything we did before. Now once you've done that, go to your right ascension and lock it in that position. You might want to just double check that that star is still in the middle of that circle. Once you've done that, go to your clock and now you want to set your clock to the zero position. So get it exactly on the zero and lock it up. Now once you've locked it up, which again it can be awkward because you know once you've moved your mount about it they can be in awkward positions but taking time over it get it dead on zero and then what you might want to do is to move your mount back to the home position uh, using the line that we made earlier with the steel rule and the pen. And once you've done that lock it up in the home position you might want to make a note of the time that it says on the clock and, and just keep a note of that so that it make, just makes it easy for you to get in your home position um, or you might want to use your marker and put a little mark on the clock itself or you might want to just use a, a spot of tipex you know white tipex it stands out and it's you know it's easy to rub off if you make a mistake or you just want to go over it all again and that's about it really uh, it's been a long one and you know, it's been, it's been quite hard to make this one, but it's also been a pleasure, and I hope it helps you out. So, once again, thanks for watching.